consistent story. It just felt like he was, you know, clearly the best player in the world for a solid three or four year time span. So that's pretty insane. But yeah, I mean, given how much the game has progressed and everything, I kind of see why why people are have a little bit of recency bias when it comes to the GOAT discussion. Very interesting. Um, um, well, we're, we're jumping into it, and I'm wondering... Um, the Wait, wait, this is not what we thought it was going to be. This is Gary Oak and Danny Phantom yeah, this versus is Open Losers. Dawson. Yeah. Okay. So, Gary Oak the Sheik teaming up with uh, Danny Phantom the Fox. Another incredible team comp, Sheik Fox, a classic. Yeah, um, yeah, I mean... Yeah, and, and Sheik, tough, not as classic. Um, I guess, how, how, I mean, of course it's a viable team. You have two of the best mm -hmm. doubles characters on uh, the same team, but it's not something that you see that often. You gotta imagine that Fox Sheik probably has the advantage here. Yeah, uh, I would say so slightly. Um, I mean, Sheik Puff tend to kind of go with, you know, uh, a Spacey as their, their teammate or like a Peach. So putting them together ne isn't necessarily the ideal team comp, but it's still very strong, obviously. Yeah, and uh, Gary Oak, Danny Phantom, another one of those teams where they're they're better in doubles than the individuals are in singles. Um, I think they're they, like they attend a lot of Chicago events. I always forget if they're. I think they're Wisconsin. Yeah, because I saw I saw uh, Gary Oak tweeting a bunch about the Bucks winning the the championship. Shouts to the Bucks, by the way. Nice. Giannis got his ring. But oh yeah. Um, yeah, they, they've done really well. They got to, like, winner's finals of, like, hold that L3's doubles over, like, a lot of really good teams. Oh, okay. So, yeah, you know, these guys are pretty good. Nice. Ooh. Yeah, and I feel like the, the Midwest in general has always been kind of about doubles, honestly, even, even back in the day. It's cool to see, for sure, because it's a very underappreciated format. I think it's really cool how it's no other fighting game has anything like this right like it's just a completely unique format and it's honestly way more difficult to be good at dub doubles than it is singles like it's significantly harder the awareness that you need you need to kind of be keeping tabs on all four characters at once somehow yeah it's it's it requires so many different skills and you're just you're calculating and pay attention to so many more things at once but when you see teams like PewFat or Armada and, and Android or any any teams that are really good doing amazing things, it's it's truly a, a thing of beauty that you you aren't gonna find in singles in quite the same way. For sure, um, I think part of the reason doubles may may not be quite as popular is because it is really hard, even as a viewer, <laughs> to keep track of what's going on. You know what I mean? It's it's a very hectic thing, and that makes it all the more impressive when people are good at keeping track of it while they're actually playing the game. That's true. Ooh. Oh my goodness. Ooh. Wow, yeah, great that, that's a really stuff nice. from Dawson there. Wow. Yeah, really nice edge guard. Um, yeah, I think I think doubles is like kind of daunting and uh, even slightly intimidating to people at first. And I think a lot of people are just put off as players because you try it, and most people aren't like good at it intuitively. Like they right. they don't understand how to space around their teammate and respect their teammate space. They oftentimes overtake or or hit their teammate. Um, they're not thinking in terms of like waiting and being patient for for setting up like teams combos. But like I find the better you get, and this almost goes for anything. But the better you get at doubles, the more you like it, and then that becomes this cycle where you want to play it more and you get even better, and then you like it even more because you're even better at it. Um, right. So. There, there tends to be this cycle where people kind of get pulled into doubles and then all of a sudden you love doubles and you're actually quite good at it. And mm -hmm. like you said, for whatever reason, the Midwest attracts a lot of these players, which is why we're seeing some pretty high levels uh, doubles content happening right now for East Coast. We're on FP now. Ooh. And just like last game, I think uh, both of the games have started off with a little bit of a rest. Good down mm -hmm. smash there from, uh, I believe, Soap. Yeah, and that even with... Amazing DI on that rest still leads to the kill. Some good edge guarding and another rest immediately. Wow. Great start to game two for green team. Looking to go up 2-0. And you know what? I'm thinking about what I said earlier. I, I've i never, you know, really... Uh, I've never participated in a doubles online event. So I'm really curious. Do all I have to assume that these teams are on a Discord call together as they're playing. But... Maybe not, and that would that would change the dynamics so much if they weren't actually communicating during it. Yeah, well, um, I believe Gary Oak is the fox here, and he's he's missing 
the DI on the up throw, and man, those one stock swings that Puff is capable of of going about with those rests, it, it, it's just so huge. And I mean, she's gonna get like one every other game, even if you're really on point. A little miscommunication there between blue team in terms of who's supposed to follow up on the up throw from Fox. That time the Sheik knew it was on them based on the DI. Man, and that could have been an, an up smash. It looks like uh, the Sheik let go of the Puff a little early. And those are the things, man. Like, blue team is finding some opportunities to try to pull this one back. They're not even that far behind, but when you leave certain punishes like that on the table, and it, it still seems like they're they're getting these openings, but they're not sure who's supposed to go in. One of mm -hmm. them needs to be patient and wait for the their teammate to bat the opponent to them and set up that volley. Really, the volleys and doubles, the hardest part is setting it up, and then it's it's actually really easy for the most part. It's like, okay, I narrow it to the Sheik. The Sheik back airs to me. You just wait yeah. and react. But it's getting that second oh. hit. The SD at basically zero from Gary Oak, and this is looking like definitely green team's game here. It's going to be tough to bring this one back. Still doable, but blue team's definitely going to have to just avoid oh. getting hit. The up throw rest is not how that's going to happen. So Yeah, and we see the Zelda coming out. Um, you know, when the going gets <laughs> tough. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, man, I love, the, I love the counter of switching into Zelda as well. <laughs> great, great play there. Sometimes you just got to go for a, a grand slam. You know, you're down and out and you got to take a big swing. Um, another thing I'm noticing too is um, on the blue team, um, we've seen in both games one and two so far. And again, I think, I believe Gary Oak is the Fox, Danny Phantom playing Sheik. When Gary Oak loses his last stock, we're seeing him take a little bit of time before taking a stock. And to me, I've always thought this in doubles, if you're going to take a stock, like, that's fine. I'll believe in you as my teammate. But you need to take it immediately because otherwise right. you're wasting precious time. I need you to come back and support me immediately because I'm now in a 2v1 situation. We're down. The deck is already stacked against us. And we need we need every single advantage we can get if we're going to make this comeback. If you're going to take the stock at all, it needs to be immediately. If you wait, then it's almost like splitting the difference where you're not getting the value of maybe the better player having all the socks, but you're also not getting the value of you supporting your teammates as quickly as possible. Yeah. Small, but it, there's no reason to be waiting in that situation. You have to make well, a decision and be decisive. I was going to say that it might just be because I don't know if pause is turned off, but there is the very real danger of trying to take the stock too early and accidentally pausing, which, you know, essentially forfeits a stock and that makes is, that, yeah. that stock taking pointless. So you have to you have to wait for the announcer to say player X defeated. Like yes. as soon as the announcer starts saying it, that's when you can press start. But that's exactly. a very real danger. That's definitely, you know, something that people are, are scared of doing, at least in online or IRL events. I'm not sure. I feel like pause, pause would be on here. I think pause is generally on on Slippy, right? So maybe right. that was that, why there was a delay there, but it still was a longer delay than it needed to be for sure. I, I do think historically for LAN events, TOs have generally been pretty good about ensuring that pause is off. Like, we could count like on one hand basically the amount of times that um, like such a event has occurred. Um, but in, a, in an environment like this, it's really tough for the TOs to control that because it's the players who are kind of piloting Slippy. Right. Um, so yeah, that's that's a real that's a real danger. But even even given that, uh, the Fox mm. was waiting considerably too long. Um, Anyway, we're yeah. halfway through the next game. Green team yeah. still doing incredibly well and uh, in a good spot to move on into loser's bracket. Danny Phantom, mm. Gary Oak, man, their backs are to the wall. Yeah, this could be their last match of doubles here. They can't put something together and the the damage lead is just building for green team while they also have the stock lead. And that's, you kind of have, it kind of feels like the entire set has been slowly but surely snowballing for Soap and Dawson, where they've built a bit more momentum each game, started game three strong, and now they're headed to a 3-0, it looks like. Yeah, and this could be fine if they're able to kill Puff, and if Gary Oak the Fox is able to hold onto this stock for a little while longer, but he's getting batted around the stage repeatedly, and I don't know that he's gonna be able to make this one back. Really nice pickup from Dawson, and now they're two stocks away from moving on uh, to the next set of losers. Really tough spot for Blue Team. They simply have to play perfectly. Yeah, this is... These types of leads feel even more insurmountable in doubles than they do in singles. It's like there's just so much that needs to go right for just a billion different interactions in a row. It's it's extremely unlikely. Yeah. Um, That's a kill. Okay. 
Yeah, the chaos of doubles just lends itself towards trades, and you cannot <laughs> afford a trade. You need clean openings and early kills. Right. Like, in singles, you can kind of just... You have less to worry about in singles, basically, so it's easier to to just win every interaction. In doubles, there's... It's pretty much impossible to be able to anticipate everything that's going to happen, so... Yeah. At and, some point, uh, you're going to get a hit. We already mentioned earlier in this uh, this commentary block, Sheik not known for being a great 2v1 character. Uh, Danny Phantom is going to have to pull out some sort of a miraculous recovery, followed by perfect neutral and punish. Not going to come out. And Soap having a little bit of fun at the end there. Um, two 3-0s in a row. Um, so very dominant yeah. doubles performances we've seen re recently. But good stuff to the green team. Uh, they will be moving on to losers quarterfinals. They're actually one set away from losers side top eight this Sunday. So congrats to them. Guaranteed yeah. ninth place in a pretty stacked bracket. Yeah, not bad at all. And we'll see if they can keep that going. That was at this stage of the bracket, that's a pretty dominant win for sure. Um, seeing a 3 0 like that. So we'll see if they can keep that going. And I'm not sure what we have next. I am guessing it could be the other winners match that we talked about before, which is Aklo and Foxy Grandpa versus B Bats and J Flex. It um, is. Yeah, we got Aklo. the ping from production, so that will be next. Okay. Aklo and Foxy Grandpa, I believe, are siblings? I think um, they... Yes, they're both part of the Brotherhood, which is a group of four mm -hmm. brothers uh, that have all lived together and grinded the game for years and years. And it's a lot of what explains how Aklo has become such a beast, seemingly out of nowhere. Um, I've talked about this many times, but um, in helping Aklo with his Summit campaign, I told his story where he's never been able to leave the state of New York, but... He showed up to a tournament and uh, he ended up winning a, a huge ultimate tournament. And then the very next day wins a huge melee tournament, literally getting first place at both events. That kind of thing doesn't happen in this community. Um, yeah. Like that just, it, it just simply doesn't. They're, they're wildly different games as we know. Mm -hmm. um, but he was just like this hidden boss that was like in this hyperbolic time chamber that is his living room where he, he just has been playing this game practically since he's been born. I think he was literally born the same year that melee came out or, or close to it. Um, right. So, so these guys, really, really interesting uh, team and, and individuals there. And really happy that Ackley was 